Thanks, Jesse, and thanks everybody for hanging in. I know it's been a very long and full day, and it's been a pleasure to be part of it. I wanted to begin by just picking up on a theme that my colleague Mary Skelton Roberts, when she kicked off the day, observed, which is that one of the great privileges of being in philanthropy is not only the ability to invest resources in people who are doing really important work in the communities on the issues that we care about, but it's also the opportunity to sometimes help to convene people who look at issues from various perspectives and from different vantage points. And I think that's what today afforded, I hope, for all of you, where we probably all work on these issues in our particular silos and with our particular mindsets. And I hope that the day gave us an opportunity to just expand our thinking, hopefully broaden our networks, and ideally come up with some interesting solutions that we might not have thought about to some of the challenges that we work on together. Among the reasons for the Barr Foundation being involved in this particular topic of mobility is are, are really the following. One is Barr embraces the view that taking a long-term perspective is important and in fact one of the unique roles that philanthropy is equipped to play. Sometimes the public sector, for a variety of reasons, doesn't have the luxury of taking a long-term view as they need to think about the next electoral cycle. Sometimes the private sector doesn't have the advantage of taking the long view as they need to think about their bottom line and delivering to shareholders. But philanthropy is uniquely qualified to take that long view, to invest risk capital, to fail from time to time, and heavens knows we've done our own share of failure at the Barr Foundation. Um, but that's all part and parcel of the privilege of the work that we do in philanthropy. The second is for us at Bar, the interest in mobility is also driven by an interest in equity. And we were thrilled today to see that equity became a theme that worked its way across many of the conversations. Sometimes when we're looking at these issues from either our private or public sector mindset, it's hard to necessarily have that be the sole driver. But for us at Bar, it's really one of the principal reasons that we're involved in this work. And then finally, as you may know, about a year and a half ago, we launched a new strategic direction within our climate program and we reoriented our our, what had been our transportation work into mobility work. And in many ways, we did it because of what Secretary Pollack said earlier today, which is we wanted to focus less on sort of the modes of how people got from A to B and more on the people themselves and think about people at the center of the work that we were going to be supporting. So that's that was a big rationale for us. What I wanted to do today, as Jesse just said, is I had the privilege of listening to much of the conversation, all of the conversation today, and trying to pick up bits and strands. And I wanted to share four themes that I thought ran across certainly much of the conversation this morning and I think were picked up on in many of the small group discussions this afternoon. The first is the value of anchoring in solutions that can provide multiple benefits. I think Julie framed this very well when she was talking about resilience this morning and talking about how we can look at resilience solutions to address sea level rise, but we can also look at some of the solutions and drawing from what the Dutch have done to see the other co-benefits that can be realized from implementing those kinds of solutions. It's also a theme that was picked up in Carl's presentation when he talked about, and I learned all these acronyms today, or not learned, but all these acronyms get thrown around, but the AVs and the EVs. Um, but thinking about AVs and EVs coming together and how the combination of those can bring multiple benefits to each side of the equation. And I also think, by the way, that in this, looking at this and thinking about multiple benefits that can be brought from different vantage points, I also think that today spoke to the power of perhaps unlikely alliances to solve some of the challenges before us. And certainly in the work of philanthropy, we often find that when we're in a position to bring together partners who aren't necessarily the most likely partners you would think addressing a social change issue, sometimes that's when people will kind of put their head up and pay attention a little bit more than they might otherwise. So I think I see some potential in that as well today. The second theme that I think we heard a lot about today and was certainly reflected in the morning presentations was how we could harness the power of data and information to address mobility uh, challenges and opportunities. Obviously, we heard multiple presentations this morning that talked about the power of data, showed how big data can play a role to help us gain understanding, but we also saw how that data could be used to do a few things. To inform good decision making. I think Stephanie's presentation again this morning spoke to some of the ways MassDOT has been using some of this data set to inform decisions that they make. Uh, we heard from Go Boston 2030 and from Focus 40 the ways in which data and information is being used to engage citizens, to engage citizens and residents in thinking about some of the solutions that could be uh, ahead of us. 
And third, I'll just speak personally, and I left my phone sitting there, but there's also a way to use data and information just to encourage our own mobility. Um, whether it's my proximity app or my spot cycle app, I will tell you in terms of my day-to-day -day commute, and I'm either on a bike or on the T or walking, it's those two apps that really help to drive some of the decisions that I make as an individual commuter. And I share that because it's a great example of the ways in which the power of data and technology can be used to drive those kinds of personal choices and decisions. The third theme that we heard today, I think, is how we all want to embrace innovation, we all want to embrace disruption, but I think the theme of the day was how we can embrace innovation and disruption, that embracing innovation and disruption sometimes requires us to change our mindset. And it's one of the things that we have observed in our work at BAR. We've been big supporters, as many of you may know, of trying to introduce bus rapid transit um, to this region, building on the success of that mode in many different parts of the world. And in doing that work, what we've realized is we've got to get out of the mindset of viewing the bus as a second or third tier transportation option and helping people to shift their mindset to see it as perhaps a modern form of mobility that has many, many benefits associated with with it, not the least of which one that Julie spoke to this morning, in an area with sea level rise where subways are threatened, buses could become even more important. So that's one example of the shifting mindset. Another example that we heard today from Stephanie was about the shifting of the mindset in the culture of MassDOT. And that's a big lift for her, no doubt. But clearly, for her to make the kinds of changes that she wants to make requires a shift in the cultural mindset and how things are done. And then the fourth theme that I'd point out, um, and perhaps I end with this theme because I think I want to end in an optimistic way, is I think it's important for us to think about how we build on assets. And I think one of the assets that we have in this community that I think we saw throughout the day is frankly enlightened public sector leadership. Whether it's Stephanie Pollack, whether it's Chris Osgood, whether it's Chris Carter and Nigel Jacob and the work that they do with New Urban Mechanics, whether it's Jim Aloisi, our former secretary who played such a pivotal role actually in organizing this day here today, we have examples of public leaders who have absolutely embraced many of the issues that I described earlier and are eager to engage outside of their silos, are eager to involve all of us as partners in trying to address the challenges that are before us. I think that is a huge asset for this region and certainly for us at the Barr Foundation, one of the principal reasons that we have such robust partnerships with the public sector is because of the quality of that leadership, its openness to acknowledging the current reality, its openness to embracing change, and we we hope its capacity to actually execute on some of the ideas that we are all excited about. So the final theme that I heard, which was less about this day, but more about the role of bringing people together to, to have interesting conversations about challenging topics, is of course people came to me as one of the funders of the day to say, so what next? So what happens next? You guys fund a lot of this stuff, so does anything ultimately come of it? And as you can imagine, it's a question that we ask ourselves a lot when we do these kinds of convenings and conferences and fora and other opportunities that bring people together. So fortunately, the onus for answering that question is going to fall to Jesse, and I'm about to turn it to her so that she can talk about some of the actionable next steps that we hope will come out of today. And of course, we're going to invite your ongoing participation in identifying some of the ways that we can build on what's been an enormously productive day. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the opportunity to share some of these thoughts. And uh, I'll turn it to Jesse. Thanks. Great. Yes, onus is on me. Uh oh. Um, Okay, so first off, can we just give a round of applause to our speakers and facilitators for four hours of work? Thank you so much. And over here, jumping in for Chris Osgood at last minute this morning, we really appreciate that. Um, so following up, you've all been sent an email with this link. These are actually the same questions you, you were asked in your working sessions. So if there's one big idea or solution, if there's a one partnership pot potential that you really heard that just spoke to you, um, and then also if there was a pilot or demonstration project. But there's also a few other questions in here. Do you want to participate in follow-up conversations and convenings, some other things? So if you could please fill this out, this will really help us in identifying some next steps because obviously we couldn't be at 10 tables um, for four hours. So good to hear your thoughts. So some next steps. We're going to coalesce these big ideas from the worksheets. Thank you so much, facilitators, for really focusing on that. Julie, Julie's table, she was on it on that worksheet. Um, we're going to create a final report with these big ideas. And um, 
create a downloadable PDF that'll be available on our website. Um, so for some of you that may be new to Meeting of the Minds, we have a very large digital platform with um, over 200,000 website visitors a year, a very, very large email list of urban practitioners who are really looking for best practices, tools, and solutions for more sustainable, smarter, connected cities. So we have this platform where we can really distribute and disseminate what was discussed today. So we're going to do that by creating a final report. We're also going to host a September webinar to report out some of the big ideas today. So part of my job and our staff is to go through those worksheets, hear, look at your survey responses, have some conversations. We have a call with all the facilitators next week to really hear what was discussed at these tables. So we're get, we have a monthly webinar series. Um, so I've reserved September for, for a webinar for reporting out what, what was discussed today. Sometimes we have 700 attendees at a webinar, so it'll be a good platform for, for us to report out. Um, we're also going to coalesce some of these ideas for our annual leadership summit, which is in Cleveland this year, October 23 through 25. We're going to have a panel discussion. Alice Brown, where are you? Raise your hand. She's going to be moderating that panel discussion, so we, she's been listening today to these ideas, and we're going to continue that brainstorm and figure out how do we kind of use the, our larger leadership so much with 450 VIPs from 20 countries for two days in Cleveland to really continue this discussion. So if you've enjoyed today, this is a little mini version of what we do in October. Come, Cleveland's actually a really interesting place, which is why we've chosen it. We do our annual summit in a different city every year. This is our 11th annual summit. So it's really, in um, and if you're interested in BRT, they have the award-winning BRT system in the US which we'll be going on. We're also going to continue this Commonwealth Magazine series to report out some of the solutions from today. We're going to um, publish every six weeks. And um, Dave and Hannah are here. Hopefully you've met them. They're our editors in um, communications department at Meeting of the Minds. Hannah's right here. Raise your hand. So if you're interested in writing for either the Commonwealth series or the Meeting of the Minds blog, um, maybe you heard something today that was exciting. Maybe it builds on something you've already been working on. Um, let's, let's have a discussion about that as well. Is Bruce still here? I don't, I don't see him. OK. Um, so other than that, we want to hear your ideas. Email us, um, call us, <laughs> tell us how we can be helpful to you um, to continue this conversation. We'd love to hear. A lot of times it's anecdotal. We hear about impacts at, at the um, afterwards. You know, Deloitte and Black and & Veatch are here today. They're not working together because they met at our annual summit a year ago. There's some big projects they're working on. So this is always comes to us at the very last. We're the last ones to know. So let us know. Are, are there partners you want to connect with? Was there someone here today you didn't get their business card and you want to email them? Let us know. We'll connect you. We want these. this to be a catalytic day for you. And hopefully it was productive. And